Well, you know, so often on these Ranger Nick segments, I get into some pretty risky kind of situations. And this month, I'm not getting into risky situations. I'm telling you how you can minimize risk. We're wrapping up fire season, we're wrapping up hurricane season, and I want to introduce you to somebody that can help us minimize risk with those trees and things around your property and your home. And that's Seth Hawkins. Hey, Seth, how hey, you doing? Hey, Nick. How's it going? I'm doing great. Seth is with the Georgia Forestry Commission, and Seth is an expert in tree risk and fire risk. And we're gonna to talk today about being fire wise on our property. So Seth, I gotta ask a question. Mm -hmm. I'm standing next to this beautiful tree, but I'm looking on the ground and I'm thinking about fire and fuel wood potential. What do you think about this? This is kind of a nice mulching, uh, creative mulching technique. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, as, and as you'll see when we get over into the woods here a little while, you'll see we're gonna be talking about fuel loading yeah. and fine fuels and how that can be an ignition source for wildfires, right? Yeah, um, yeah. So this isn't an ideal way to mulch around your trees. Um, just those sticks and stuff just kind of provide kindling essentially at the base of your tree. So if, God forbid, an ember or a spark got into this, yeah. it's not going to turn into a fire big enough to catch the tree on fire. Absolutely, and we're pretty close to this building. And I kind of want to walk over here, if that's all right. I want to walk in and critique this building a little bit and thinking mm -hmm. about fuel sources and a fire potentially getting close to this building. <clears throat> For the folks at home that might be thinking about their house or their barn, Talk to me about this place. What does this look like to you from a fire-wise and a risk standpoint? Yeah, so um, so fire-wise is a program ran by the U.S. Forest Service and the state forestry agencies are involved as well. Um, and basically fire-wise, um, you can get certified as a community for fire-wise, but it's also just landscaping and building tips to help mitigate and minimize the risk you might have at your home if again, God forbid, a wildfire did encroach upon your home. Sure. Um, you know, in a lot of parts of Georgia, we have a lot of folks living in what we call the wildland urban interface. So that's woods butting up right to houses, yep. which is great. I know I love living in the woods, it's great. But also what comes along with that is inherent sure. is having risk. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, so when we start talking about just fire-wise landscaping and building etiquette and things, so, you know, the first thing that I kind of start looking at are is 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 the distance between the actual building and vegetation. So okay. vegetation would be a fuel source in this in this case. So like these um, guys right exactly. here. Exactly. I mean, and while they seem nice and green right now, when we get in a severe drought like we were at the end of September, beginning of October, these things are definitely dry enough to carry fire if, if embers got into it. And in those dry conditions, an ember or a piece of ash from a fire can travel almost a full mile and start a spot fire somewhere else. So it's really important for us to be thinking about things like having our gutters cleaned out. Um, as you, I don't know if you can see up there, but the gutters have a lot of um, leaf debris and stuff, and I'm sure that's really dried out from baking in the sun all the yeah, time. Yeah. So if an ember floats from a forest fire, down into that, we've started a fire up in the roof of your house, right? So yeah. again, when we're, when we're talking about fire-wise, we're talking about vegetation and ignition sources being a certain distance from your home. Fire-wise recommends zero to five feet of a buffer of mm. no vegetation at all, and then five to 30 feet of another buffer where you're just kind of um, making sure you're limbing up your trees and things like that. And, and Seth, I mean, looking at this distance here, definitely in violation from a fire-wise, and this door right here is wooden. I mean, so that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So, and you know, when we talk about vegetation sources, we also talk about mulch materials and what you have like, so this wooden landscaping edging right here might not be the most firewise choice, right? Um, so firewise is usually gonna recommend river stone, pea gravel, things like that oh. to have right around the base of your house, especially if there's wooden parts to the foundation. So now earlier we were able to see an example of a dwelling that was fire wise. We saw some of that vegetation backed off there within that zone. Right. We didn't see the limbs over top of the home and the right. gutters were cleaned out. So right. if folks at home are wondering what does this need to look like from a safety standpoint, that was an example there. This maybe not so much so. <laughs> right, right. So the other building we stopped at, um, as you know, like we, you were saying, there's a lot of space there. There wasn't, there weren't tree limbs hanging over it. There wasn't a vegetation or ignition sources butted up against the house. Whereas here you can see there's a little, you know, there's, there's, there's potential for if a spark got into this, it could theoretically light this up. If it lit that wooden crawl space sure. door up, sure. that gets into the wooden foundation. Sure. So, and now what I want to do is I want to take us from the building and the aspect of good and not so good buildings to the property. Mm -hmm. And with hurricane season kind of wrapping up, what are some risks associated with trees around buildings and our homes that we need to think about too? So let's mosey on over there next. Okay, Seth, so we're standing out here along this busy road. We're looking at this tree. Your expert trees is in tree safety and tree risk. What would your recommendations be about this fellow right by the road with this kind of damage? 
Yeah, so, you know, this tree has an, has an old lightning strike wound on this, and you can see down in here, yeah. a, there's a whole bunch of fungal decay going on inside the tree, right? So whenever we talk about tree risk, we talk about a tree defect, the likelihood of that tree failing, coupled with target occupancy rate. So oh. obviously this busy road right here provides sure. pretty heavy target occupancy rate. So that would increase the risk level for this tree. Um, you know, given this defect, that fungal decay, given its proximity to the road and sure. parking spots, sure. I would usually recommend removal for a tree like this. Okay. Now, All if right. you have this tree with these same defects out in the middle of a pasture or in the woods where there's nothing for it to fall on, no target, I probably wouldn't call it high risk, leave it as wildlife habitat sure. and let it ride. But sure. in this in urban environment, probably remove them. Yeah, I would look at this tree and think that this is a habitat component, a snag, a standing dead tree, good for woodpeckers and owls. But we look at this as close as it is to the road and a parking lot, a lot of risk there. Mm -hmm. Y'all at home, you can check out the websites that are on the screen there to learn more about how you can contact a certified arborist and a tree expert professional to come out and give you some help along with that local extension agent that we always talk about too. Seth, thanks for spending time with me today. Thank you, sir. What a great time together and what a lot to learn about risk with hurricanes and fire. What a great topic this month. Y'all know what to do. While you're online checking out the Ranger Nick segments on YouTube, check out what the guys with the farm monitor have gotten going on. You know we love it when you do that. And until next time, Seth, like we always say, I'm Ranger Nick reminding you that enthusiasm is contagious. So pass it on. Y'all, thanks for joining us this month. We'll see you back here again next time. See ya.